Jerry. From my hiding place, I have been watching you for years. I remember when you were born. I remember that your father was hoping for a son who would carry on the tradition, but was then surprised to learn that by the age of eight or nine, you could play the drums to beat the band, carrying the tradition far beyond the limits of imagination. You walked out onto history's stage, unarmed and unprotected. I can't imagine, I can't imagine that you were prepared for what you would face. A lifetime of being singular, of being one of the only ones, one of the few. This took courage, but somehow you rose to the task. And now we all know something about the possible. This is not a documentary, but rather an investigation and observation. You were young, very young, when you walked out onto history stage, following in the footsteps of your father and your grandfather. You entered the ring, the battle of men, yet you were a child, a girl, a woman. What this meant, what this means, is a story that is cruel enough to curl the blood. Terry, I remember a time before time, and I remember the tick, 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 tick of the clock. I remember a time when you walked out onto history's stage, unarmed and unprotected, but you walked out without fear and with courage. How? Why? Where does that come from? On the day you were born, I saw a flock of birds migrating through air and space and time. Blackbirds. You were a time before time, and you became a keeper of time, one of the first but not the last. The beginning, but not the end. You set something in motion, and now the world follows your beat, your tone, your pulse, your rhythm, your meaning. You were zooming long before Zoom, taking us into a world of the possible, a world of meaning, a landscape of meaning. It included the likes of you and others that were to follow. How? How did you do this, Jerry? I remember seeing you as a young girl, and then later as a woman, banging on the drums, keeping time, and allowing others to follow suit, to pace themselves in your measure. It was a gift a special gift that occurs only once in a lifetime. For the moment, there is no other you. I am the drums. There is no movement without rhythm. Whether we walk, talk, type, or chew, rhythm dominates nearly everything we do. Even good morning has a cadence that we all respond to. And just the act of breathing ignites the drummer inside of you. The drums aren't just an instrument, but a necessary tool. They live within us, so let them be heard, let them be used. For tolerance, respect, sharing, these too are a drum thing. Polyrhythmic behavior in action. 
I reinterpret the word drum to remind me of what I need to practice. Rhythm can change poison into medicine and gives hope that we can be united by one ideal. It connects us and can protect us, and I've witnessed its power to heal. Rhythm is a universal language, the dialogue its ultimate goal. Our instruments are just the go-between in touching one another's soul. Compassion, wisdom, faith, courage, and passion, all qualities that help us to support and move. These are the things that make the listener care, and these things, globally speaking, we all need. I don't just play the drum, I am the drums. We've become one, and in simpler terms, whether a girl or a boy, playing drums is fun. But a woman on the drums promotes equality, harmony, and balance. Are you feeling it? Though this points past gender, ethnicity, or social background, her inner drummer may struggle before conquering the challenge. Yes, the creative platform offers a plethora of possibilities, large and small. We can play music with people we don't even like. We can elevate them or catch them if they fall. And studying music may teach us in theory what's right or what's wrong. But what's critical is our connection to others and the intention of our song. Control, space, dynamics, power and articulation. So it is with life and music. There is no separation. Carl Jung explained the anima and the animus, where man and woman can merge. Duke Ellington said, the drum is a woman, and her voice shall be heard. Improvisation is truly ideas in action. Sometimes I even think it's a way that God talks to us and through us. And when presented with a divine ideal, it becomes sacred. Because when we are creative, we are at our very best. Fully integrating our mind, body, and spirit. And actually, I'm convinced creativity saves lives. So every time I play, I think of that as my mission. mentoring from people that have made it. And so those are some of the things that need to change. My life has been a prime example of what can happen when 
someone doesn't accept age, race, or gender. Race. Someone doesn't accept boundaries of age, race, age, race, or gender. Someone doesn't accept boundaries or gender. Someone doesn't accept boundaries of age, race, race, or gender. This is my cousin, my close cousin, my sister that plays the drums. I used to be on the top floor and I had my record player. I used to bring her upstairs when they were all downstairs and I used to turn Terry on and this is a mind blower to me. Hendrix, Miles, Funkadelics, Herbie Hancock. She jumped into this music world and it just accelerated. I was fortunate enough to work with Ray Charles one of the things that strikes me, a uh, great similarity between Ray and Terry Lynn is neither one of them wanted to hear about genre divisions. They were both genre breaking artists, you know, floated through genres with ease and did whatever they, whatever the creative inspiration called on them to do. Terry is one, of course. I've worked for many, many years with Esperanza Spalding and also bassist Linda Mahon O oh, and um, the trumpeter Ingrid Jensen. So for whatever reason, I've, I've actually worked with a, a large number of female band leaders in my career, you know, which I'm, I'm you know, very pleased about. <laughs> it's been great. The, it's hard to overstate, you know, women in jazz are so historically underrepresented, even though their contributions have been just as important and seismic and revolutionary as that of men. I've always called her a deep diver. She is not one, if she sees something, she is not one to put her toe in and test the water. She will jump in every time she comes up. She comes up with all of this treasure. She doesn't see limits. She only mm. sees possibility. I call her big life because she has, she has, she can have so many irons in her fire and she is working with them all. She knows people's stories. She's devoting every waking hour of her life, and probably the sleeping hours too, to bringing through what we need. It's needed here. You know, everything she's doing is needed on Earth right now. She'll be like a key. She'll be seen as like this key that unlocks this opening to a big turning point in consciousness and active, engaged consciousness about gender and equity. She brings light and joy to the world. That's what she does. And she does it with a fierceness that is enveloped in grace. When the, the story is finally written, what most will stand out is her commitment to justice, her commitment to this music, and her commitment to making a difference in the world. That's how she'll be remembered.
think a lot of young people are looking at her and seeing the impact that she's having in the community and all over. She's a visionary. She's the bomb. There's nobody else like her. <laughs> Terry has this quiet fire about her, this quiet energy. It's a very searching energy. She inspires you to dig deeper, dig deeper and be more expansive. She always sounds like her best piece, her best work has yet to be recorded. She is multifaceted, multi-passionate, multi-talented, multidisciplinary. She is multi. When we think about this decades down the line, I think we will find that her as an artist and as an educator and as a thought leader will have influenced so many more change agents and change makers and way makers on things that we can't even imagine yet. One thing about Terry Lynn Carrington is she absolutely will not be written out of history. from queens and goddesses of the universe, of the multiverse. Mother Earth, mother of all humanity. Stretching and reaching and reaching and stretching. We will not shrink ourselves any longer for anyone's comfort. We have only just begun stretching and Reaching and dancing and reaching and stretching, we will no longer adhere to others' ideas of beauty. We have been misunderstood and mistreated for centuries. But we rise. We rise like dough, with no dough. We are the backbone of civilization. The wealth that is calculated every day is built on the backs of black mothers and black mothers' sons. Stretching and reaching and reaching and stretching and dancing and singing out of the womb, out of the earth, out of confinement, out of poverty. Black beauty is the beauty of life in its richest state and its ugliest state. We're not sorry that it pains you to look at us, to acknowledge our beauty or talent or intellect. We have our own crosses to bear stretching and reaching, giving and living, just barely sometimes and at what cost. Living and giving a damn, giving and living against all odds. From nothing comes invention. The will and future of humanity wrapped up in something that cannot be contained. From nothing comes something greater than you may ever imagine. We will not accept mediocrity any longer when it comes to dealing with self. It's time to break through the shackles and chains, free your minds, unharden your hearts, practice empathy. Look up the word compassion and love like you have never loved before. Awakenings to higher self are not overrated. I wish you the best of luck. No one should have to be this resilient.
You know, we never talked about drums that much, but we would talk about music and other things in life. And uh, never at that time, right, would we think that she would accomplish what she accomplished. You know, so she wears a lot of hats now. <laughs> and she's also made incredible contributions, you know, as a drummer, as a band leader, as a as a producer, as a singer, as a an activist for uh, women's rights, and uh, she hasn't let anything, any you know, like obstacles stop her from doing what she wants to do. She sees she sees things as positive, and she's tenacious, and she sticks with things, no matter how tough they get. She stays in there and completes the work. And, uh, man, I love her for that. Even in the face of your remarkable contributions, you've spent a lifetime proving yourself, not because you wanted to. You've been underestimated and undervalued by people who should have known better. For all it took in proving them wrong, Terry, we thank you. For standing strong in a world dominated by men and for insisting that women had a place, we thank you. For bringing a woman's warmth to the sound of music and expanding our understanding of the possible, we thank you. For every step taken on the journey, we thank you for all of the recognition, all of the awards, all of the honorary degrees, for your great achievements that have led to the road to Carrington. We salute you. For the mountains climbed and the valleys explored, for carrying the weight of the world and for lifting us all up, we thank you for establishing the Institute of Jazz with gender and justice, we thank you. For your teaching, guidance, and mentorship, we thank you. For a lifetime of giving to others, we thank you. For your victories, large and small, we thank you. For the gift of music and sound, for composing, arranging, producing, and recording, we thank you. For living a life guided by curiosity, wisdom, and purpose, we thank you. For working in front of, alongside of, and in back of some of the greatest musicians of all time, we thank you. For working with the likes of Dizzy Gillespie, Clark Terry, Joe Sample, Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, James Moody, Stan Getz, we thank you. For your work with Jerry Allen, Buster Williams, Diane Reeves, David Murray, Kevin Eubanks, Tina Marie, Kenny Barron, Cassandra Wilson, we thank you. For your work with Dee Dee Bridgewater, Patrice Russian, Esperanza Spaulding, Diana Krall, Nona Hendricks, and the great activist warrior Angela Davis, and for all the many, 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 many others that you've worked with, we thank you, Terry. For being the best drummer, the best producer, the best jazz instrumentalist, the best jazz album, the best vocal, for real life stories, for jazz and spirit, for the Mosaic Project, for money, jungle, provocation, and blue, and for new standards, we thank you. For the giant steps taken in resisting the resistance. For your bold activism, your knowledge, your lecturing and teaching. For your kindness and your grace in leading us all to higher ground, we thank you. For knowing yourself, we thank you for the enormous talent it took to win three Grammys, we thank you. For allowing us, our people, to be recognized 
through you we thank you for the toil the will the effort the tenacity the determination and the ability to endure it all for your work your commitment to excellence and for all that is to come we thank you for every step leading us on the road to Carrington we thank you <laughs> 